Hello, good afternoon everyone. Welcome to Liquid Brain. So today I want to talk about how you can customize your annotation in your heat map using the complex heat map function. So if you don't know what is complex heat map, it's a package that draw heat maps, that draw very complicated heat maps. And annotations are things that are around a heat map that not usually appear there. So for example, if you look at the screen right now, the, the single line of heat map on the side here, that's kind of an annotation because that's not part of the heat map body. Uh, the top um, bar chart over there, the box plot over there, the few dots that you have, uh, also like anything that you want to add basically outside of the heat map body can be considered as part of the annotations. And there's several ways you can add annotations into your heat map. And this is just a, a, a brief walkthrough on how you can do a certain kind of things. Uh, I do not actually wrote the package or actually most of the script around here. So I'm going to send you to the video description down below. There's a link to the original book that describes all of this. It's way more detailed, but it's also, it might be a little bit overwhelming for people freshly into the environment. And I'm just going to so, show you some essential part of it. So for you to actually download this script, you can also go to the video description. You can find my GitHub repository and you can actually download this called part two annotation dot rmd and it will bring you to exactly this script that you're looking at right now okay so the first part of the rmd is usually just for cosmetic and kind of ignore them and the second part is just for people that uh, if you have not installed complex heat map in your R studio you can just uncomment um, line 16 over there and just install the heat map from bioconductor if you're already installed you can comment this back because after you have installed it, you don't have to install it every single time that you want to run the, this package, okay? But you do need to run a, run a library function to tell R that I want to load complex heat map into my environment for this analysis, okay? So for, for the first part, it's just a rundown of annotations, what are they and how do we use them, what is annotation object, for example. Okay, the first few thing is uh, nothing much. It's just to set a matrix of random numbers. So in this case, we're creating 100 random numbers uh, in 10 rows and 10 columns into an object called MAT. We're gonna put row, uh, sorry, R1 to 10 for the row and C1 to 10 for the columns. And we can create a heat map annotation object using this, okay? So what this function essentially do is to create heat map annotation two of them, first of them called F001, which is just a random number of, uh, a 10 random number, okay? That's run if, just create random number. And then the second uh, annotation object called BAR1, which is again, uh, a bar plot of 10 random numbers, okay? So that is our column annotation. So once we have done our column annotation, we're gonna create our second annotation, uh, which is called the row annotation. Okay, so the column annotation is called heat map annotation and the row annotation is called the, the row annotations. Okay, again, these have the same concept. We have a row annotation, two of them. First of them called F002. Second is a bar two, which is just a number and a bar chart uh, respectively. So once we have done this one, you can see we're piping it into the first heat map where the top annotation, so let's just go for the one. So the first top annotation is the column annotation HA, which stands for heat map annotation, I believe so. So you can see we have two objects here, F001 and, and BAR1, where the F001 is just 10 random numbers. So in this case, they're represented by an intensity of color. If you don't put specifically what kind of annotation do you want, but if you put in like ANO bar plot, it will actually represent that number, which is between 0 to 1 as a different bar chart. So same happens to our second annotation on the right over here, our row annotation, where you can see that F001 and 2 are just colors because we're just, we just fit in numbers. But, but for BAR1 and 2, 
because we use the anode bar plot uh, functions over here, we can see them as represented as bar plot. So this is essentially the, the, the simplest way of how to use annotation and how to pipe it into a heat map without too much of the customization. And I would say it already looks quite, quite nice. And if you do want a little bit more customization, you can either do it to the left, right and up, down. So just use the top annotation or the bottom, bottom annotation as column HA and right left as row HA, for example. Okay, so the next one is uh, understand, go deeper slightly into annotation object and try to give you a little bit more of an example of what to do. So similarly with the legend that we talked about in our last video, annotation itself can exist as an individual object, but um, it, in, as an individual object, uh, it's not particularly useful. You can look at the list, for example, column HA. Let's just run this one. Let's look at column HA over here. So you can see it's an S4 object with all these attributes, but it by itself, it's not particularly useful until you pair it with a heat map. Okay, so these two just show how you can do uh, column annotation and row annotation. So let's just go for the first one. So what we have gone through just now is a, a simple, in this case, we call color annotation. So for color annotation, you can simply fit in just numbers that is at the same number of elements as your heat map. So if your heat map has 10 columns, you have to fit in this as 10. So if I do at 18, uh, something bad is going to happen. Either it doesn't uh, go according to what you want it to do, or it just gives you an error and tell you that the, the number is different. I, I don't know what to do, and it gives you an error. So make sure that it's the same. And sometimes the color changes because we don't specify. I'll tell you how to do that later on. Okay, so the second one is to use uh, what is that called? An, an, instead of a number annotation, we're using a, uh, a categorical annotation. So just now we are we're using a run if to plot some random number. So in this case, we are randomly giving it a letter, which is A, B, and C. And we're gonna put it 10 times. We're gonna create 10 random letters based on A, B, or C. And we're gonna do it as our uh, column annotation. And once we're done, we can also use, I'm gonna introduce a new command over here, uh, which is percent %V%. Percent which is actually merging a heat map with annotation vertically. So the V actually stands for vertical. So it's just another way of how you can combine things vertically. In this case, is how you can combine your heat map with annotation vertically and very easily. So sorry, we just have a praying outside. So I hope that it's not too distracting as a background music. So the next one is, uh, like I promised just now, we're going to tell you how to change the num the colors of your annotation object. Let's just, okay, let's just have a look over here. Shut up. <laughs> so the next one is, as I promised, how do I change the color of our annotation object? So we're going to use the similar function called um, color ramp 2 which is from the package called circleize. So what it does is that it try to interpolate color between blue, white, and red, which represent 0, 5, and 10. And every value in between, they'll try to mix the color, color between the two to, to create interpolation of colors. Okay, so how you do that is, again, just, just do that, where the color equals to the list of where the FOO object is going to have, it's going to use the color functions that we defined earlier, and the bar is going to label it as A is equals to red, B is equals to green, and C is equals to blue, as you can see over here with our annotation object. So the A, B, C just now actually start come from this object over here. What we do is just to change the color of the A, B, and C into what color do we want them to be. Okay, you can change another color to see what happens and if you need a complete list of the colors, I think you can check out the official documentation, which if I remember, I'll put it into the video description down below. Otherwise, you can actually look it on the, on the book that I have link. Uh, go to the indexes in the back. There's a, there's a place where they list out all the numbers. Oh, sorry, all the colors and what they are actually represent. Okay, so the next one, again, it's gonna be
Okay, so the next one is just a little bit more customization about the borders, whether you want the borders to be represented in the annotation or not. So you can see that now the bar object has a black border outside of it, while just now it doesn't have nothing much, a simple border of customization. Okay, so the next one we're gonna do is instead of doing our row annotation, we're gonna actually uh, use our row annotation as our column annotation. So this works because our row and column number are exactly the same, but it is not recommended that you do so. <laughs> I actually just use the same list that uh, is being given on top and just change it, change the way of how it is combined with the hit. So what do I do is instead of just now, which is the percent %V% percent, uh, HA, I just do a plus. So when we do a plus, it will actually add the row annotation on the site, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, so... Okay, just now I show you the column annotation, which is actually kind of tape. So just now I show you the column annotation. So how you do row annotation is slightly different. So first of all, you have to change the column annotation over here into row annotation over here. And instead of using the percent V percent, what we have to do is to a uh, heat map plus the hash A. Okay, the way of symbol are slightly different, but inside the annotation object of how you create the annotation object, it is very, it's exactly the same with each other. So you can actually just reuse them. Um, just make sure that you understand that uh, adding things vertically and ad adding things horizontally it is slightly different. Uh, percent B percent only add things vertically, where plus actually add two things together. Okay, we're gonna talk more about plus. Uh, when we talk in our next video, where we try to combine heat map and, and from one heat map to another. So, uh, it's a few more um, annotation type is the, where we. So, a few more annotation type. So, instead of just doing colors, we can also do like points. So, uh, we're gonna use similarly like the unknown bar plot that we talked about in the beginning of the video. We also can do unknown points. We can see that they are just points and I might need to change the labeling over here a little bit but it's just how far away from each other so you might also want to change make the, the annotation size slightly bigger so you can actually see a little bit better on the there so instead of actually doing point you can also do lines which in this case uh, works slightly better because it's easier to see and easier to understand um, where does it goes up and down and so on okay so you can also do it on the column or rows same concept. So yeah, we have already done anubar plot, which is also can be done on the column or row. Just use the anubar plot object in your annotation object. And for column, uh, you can do a percent v percent, and for p row, you have to do a plus. And if you want to put your annotation above the heat map, you cannot do a percent v percent. Uh, I think there's a beginning where you can go to the beginning of the video. Uh, there's a way that there's a code to show you how. Just right on the beginning. Okay, so instead of, so we sometimes also need to do uh, a histogram, but in histogram, slightly more complicated because you need to actually create a, a different matrix because remember, uh, just now in bar plot, uh, dot plot or color plot, it's just a single value per line or per row where in histogram, you have to have multiple value per row. So we actually have to create a, a matrix, for example, with 10 rows and actually pipe it into our unknown histogram uh, functions so that it, create, it creates a row annotation with histogram for eight rows. And every row, there's a hundred different uh, randomly generated data to, to plot the histogram. Uh, of course, in reality, you have to define how you want to plot a histogram and where your data is coming from. It's more like an example of what it can do rather than what you should do. So instead of histogram, you can also do things like density plot and we can do a violin plot, which is actually... A, I, I would say density plot is kind of... Vi violin plot is kind of density plot. It's just that it's up and down instead of just a single axis. Uh, they're, they're kind of similar in what they, are want, what they want to do. And it's also a little bit similar to the histogram, I think, that we talked about just now. 
So the next one is going to be the actually useful one, which is the text annotation. So of course, you can achieve the same uh, outlook over there using the column, sorry, the row annotation and just pipe the row name directly into your uh, heat map and plot it out just like our C1 to C10 over there. But using an annotation just gives you a little bit more controls about for example, the font size and later on when you're combining things, how do you want the, the labeling to go left and right, up and down and so on. Uh, just one thing that you can do and keep in mind when you see a certain things. So that is all the simple annotation that we have done, which is just putting on the side, putting on the bottom, putting on the left, putting on the right. So now we want to do a little bit more like a summary where we try to create, what we try to plot more things into our heat map. So the first one is actually create a heat map annotation uh, on top of the other heat map and based on that heat map creates a, a bar plot above. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk to you one by one. So the first one is just to create an unknown summary object with a height of 4cm. So this only say that my summary is going to be 4cm high, nothing else. So the second thing is create another object called V which has either A or B and there's 50 of them. So what you can do is go to V down here and have a look. So it's... Whoop, did I run it? Yeah, so it's going to be A, B, A, B, A, A, B, B, A, B, A, B and random and there's going to be 50 of them. So the third one is going to be our, our splitting parameters where I try to have again, uh, in this case also 50 uh, also 50, what do you call, 50 different kind of, uh, yeah, we're going to have 50 randomly generated A and B as well. So it's almost exactly the same as the, the, the V object that we, that we did just now. Yeah, it's going to be exactly the same because they have the same function. Okay, so let's go through one by one. First of all, is to plot our, our, our matrix out. So this is our matrix, it's our heat map. A with either A or B, so there's 50 rows, but there's only a single column. Okay, once you get that, we're gonna add in our our column, column color, sorry, the color where A is gonna be red, B is gonna be blue. So that is our heat map, just change color. So the third one, how to change color, uh, we can, after we add the color, we're gonna add in a top annotation. So yeah, I think we have to run it through the same time, otherwise some repeat runs might cause a problem. Okay, now it creates a summary on top of the original heat map. So let's look at this. This is the original heat map. This is heat map with a summary on top. How many blue are there and how many reds are there? So you can see from below, reds are slightly less, blue is slightly more, and this is what it's trying to do. Okay, so once we're done, we're just gonna change the, the width of the overall heat map to a much smaller one. And then we're gonna do a row split, which actually try to split them into two different sections, section A and section B, based on our split uh, object over there. And we're gonna, so once you have it split, you actually create two summary. The first one is based on A, the second one is based on B, where you can very easily to see the different type of subtype within the category A and category B. I think it's a mistake to use a, both A and B over there. I think we should actually change this to maybe C and D. I think that will make things a little bit easier to see for everyone. Yeah. Yeah, so you can see uh, the type A and type B in section cluster C and cluster D and how is the distribution you can very easily, very easily see in the annotation, um, annotation summary on top. So down here is the actual heat map, up there is an actual annotation. Okay, so this is just an example. So of course, uh, once you got that ready, you can again do the same thing with this one where we change instead of a simple summary like we do just now on categorical data, we can do a box plot on numerical data, which is kind of the same thing. So that you can see that in section A, B, uh, how is the distribution between the data. You can see that cluster B is slightly um, more extreme on the, on the high end, but overall slightly lower than A in terms of the mean and quartile 
and so on. Very easily see, again, up there the box plot is the summary object, down there is the actual heat map, and right here is the, uh, is the legend. Okay, same concept. And this one is again the same thing, but it's just that we instead of putting it on top, we are doing it on the bottom. So what we did is just change the top annotation to bottom annotation, and we can get our annotation below. And this one we doesn't split the data, so we only have a single box plot over here. Okay, so next one is again we have a heat map beside a heat map, I'll say. <laughs> so yeah, so again we're doing an uh, so. Okay, I think we have to do it one by one again. Where M is the matrix of our heat map, and HT list itself is to, to plot out the heat map with M and then create a main matrix. Okay, so HT list has one heat map. So one, then what we actually do is again uh, create another annotation, anno annotation, sorry, uh, anno summary named HT and we're going to create another matrix called v okay so so the v is going to so the the matrix v is going to have a uh, something like this so so as you can see in this part okay this is going to be slightly confusing uh, this heat map represent the main matrix which is the blue color and the red color while the second heat map that we draw here is going to be the green and gray color so what it essentially does is that first of all I draw a matrix and, and then I combine this matrix, sorry, a heat map, the main heat map, and then again I'm gonna draw another heat map beside of it, which is using this command. And the second heat map that I draw has a top annotation of HA, and again it's got, having a width of 1 cm. And what I do is I combine these two heat map into an object called HT list. So HT list contain, contains two heat map side by side by using the plus command. Okay, so HT list here contain the first heat map. Everything here contain the so H, so here it contain the the blue and red heat map. Everything here contain the gray and green heat map. And once we combine them, we can use the draw command to draw HT list out. And this is what we get with their own legend and their own location beside each other. So what we can do is actually to do further, which is to create a new heat map again using a matrix 2 with again more colors and different annotation again, where now we're using a heat annotations. So heat map 1 has a categorical data, heat map 2 has a numerical data, so that's why heat map 1 has a kind of a bar chart distribution of data, where heat map 2 has a box plot distribution of, of data, but both are kind of the same and they, they look the same, just that again, we're adding them one by one from left to right using the plus command like we are, we, how we add our column annotation just now. And lastly, we're gonna again use the draw function to draw out the list which now contains three different heat map uh, from left to right. Yeah, so this is essentially the same, just that we, we just add a little bit of gap in between using the ht gap command so that it looks a bit nicer. Actually for me, I will just make it a little bit bigger again so that it looks nicer over here. Yeah, so it looks nicer. Oh yeah, because I changed the HT list and yeah, that's kinda, it kinda mess up. So yeah, again, if you if you do one, you have to run it in sequence because they reuse a lot of parameters name. Uh, so it might, it might actually lost a few things. So this is the same as just now, just that it's a bit more separate from each other so it can look a bit nicer from each other. So that's basically all I think that is really, really essential for people just coming fresh into complex heat map packages. So what you do is, when you after you finish up a heat map, you can actually add more heat map object. So there are different type of heat map op sorry heat map annotation object. So there are different type of heat map annotation. There's colors, there's bar chart, there's density, there's summary, and there's line, and there's curve, there's histogram, and so on. So choose what is most suitable for you. And what you can do is use the heat map annotation or row annotation or column annotation. 
uh, function and just pipe in a list of the different things that you want to create. So in this case, there is one, two, three, three different annotations and we want to show the legend for, for all of them except for the bar plot. Okay, so yeah. So, so once you have done the top, the, the annotation, you can just add it into your heat map using the percent %v% percent command, or you can use the plus command, or you can just simply use the top and bottom annotation command and just add them on top of each other. And you can have your heat map either your annotation, uh, you can have your heat map annotation either on the top or on the bottom of each other. So you can also do it um, in this case, the, the row annotation where you add it on the left and the right and this is the legend that you have and this is the heat map that you have and you can customize them using the color using the color functions the color color brewer function something like that okay so you can see in the code above so that's basically all i want to say for today about annotation the next one will be how do you combine different heat map together left right up down so now we're just combining annotation but in the future you will want to combine different heat map different annotation and different legend into the same and how you want to do that will be in the next video for now thank you for watching for the complex heat map part 2 annotation and we'll see you in the next one bye